This video is about the PTU, more specifically about its operating conditions and operating and inhibit logics. So first, a quick revision of what the PTU is. The PTU power transfer unit is uh, a bidirectional system between the green and yellow hydraulic systems, which allows the yellow system to pressurize the green system and vice versa in case one side loses its main source of pressure. So for example, if the green hydraulic system loses its source of primary pressure, which is the green engine driven pump, the PTU with the help of the yellow system will provide the pressure to pressurize the green hydraulic system. But if the green hydraulic system had had, uh, for example, say a reservoir leak or a reservoir overheat, wherein now there is uh, no green hydraulic fluid itself or the fluid is uh, effectively unusable, the PTU would in this case not be able to help as it does not transfer hydraulic fluid itself but only provides the pressure to power the other side hydraulic system if its primary source of pressure has failed. Just a side note here, do keep in mind that while hydraulic fluid itself is not transferred to the other side, some fluid from the operating hydraulic side is in fact used to run the PTU and in turn help it power the other side. Why is this point important? Uh, more on this at the end of the video, but for now let's get into the PTU operating logic itself. So before we get into the differences of PTU operation on ground and in flight, some basic points about PTU operation is that uh, it is inhibited during the first engine start. It does a self test during the second engine start. It is inhibited during cargo door operations and uh, for 40 seconds after the end of cargo door operations. Now if you could uh, just look at the logic schematic over here. The first two conditions are of course the basic conditions which uh, must be met in order for the PT to run. So we'll refer to these as the master conditions which uh, seem quite obvious. The PTU push button switch must be in its normal auto position and there must be a difference of pressure of uh, more than 500 PSI between the green and yellow hydraulic systems implying of course that one side has lost its uh, source of pressure and requires the PTU's help to pressurize it. So these are the basic master conditions and apart from the master conditions we need either one of these sets of conditions which we'll refer to as set 1 and set 2 pardon my handwriting so we need one of these sets and the master conditions to get the PTU to run and among set 1 being an OR gate either one of them is good enough for set 1 to be satisfied and if set 2 is being used to uh, get the PTU to run then being an AND gate, both of these conditions should be met. So as you can see, in flight, it's nice and easy because the master conditions, of course, would be met. The PTU push button would be auto. And uh, so really, as long as there's a difference uh, of pressure of more than 500 PSI, the PTU would run. The reason being, if you look at set one, which we need just one of the conditions, where in flight, the so nose landing your shock absorber would be extended. And for some reason, even if set one is not satisfied, both the conditions of set 2 would be satisfied, in flight the parking brake would be off and the nose wheel steering would not be in the tow position. So in flight, just to reiterate, very simple, as long as there's a difference of pressure of more than 500 psi between the green and yellow hydraulic system, implying that uh, one of the systems has lost pressure, the PTU will automatically run. In any case, let's hop into my PC sim and have a look at uh, the automatic PTU operation in flight based on the logic uh, that we just saw. So we're in flight now, both engines are running, green system is being powered by green engine driven pump and yellow by the yellow engine driven pump. And everything is going along normally and suddenly we have a green engine one pump low pressure so now the PTU push button was in auto there was a difference in pressure between green and yellow of more than 500 psi so as per the logic we just saw the PTU has automatically kicked in 
and of course our in-flight nose shock absorber is extended both masters are on and parking brake is off and nose wheel steering is of course not in the toe position so there you have it automatic pt operation in flight based on the logic that we just saw so now that uh, we have seen the automatic pt operation in flight let us have a look at its operation on ground and how the conditions of the logic affect its operation let's head into the full flight simulator for this and have a practical look at the pt operation logic in action and as we do that i'm just going to have the uh, ptu logic appear on the screen as well and as we remember the main or master conditions uh, for the automatic ptu operation are that uh, the ptu push button switch must be in auto and of course there must be a differential uh, pressure of more than 500 psi between the green and yellow hydraulic systems and in addition to that we need uh, either the conditions from set 1 or the conditions from set 2 to get the ptu to run and again uh, set 1 set 2 is not official manufacturer terminology it's just uh, terms that i'm using uh, for ease of understanding in this case also just a reminder if set 1 is being used to run the ptu then any one condition from set 1 is good enough to allow set 1 to run the ptu but if set 2 is being used to run the ptu then both conditions from set 2 must be met in order to allow set 2 to run the ptu this will uh, be a lot clearer when we uh, see it in action so to set the scene we're on the ground with engines shut down but the yellow electric pump is being used to run the yellow hydraulic system and the green hydraulic system having no source to pressurize it is being pressurized by the ptu nose wheel steering is not in tow position but parking brake is on so straight away we can see that set 2 cannot be used to run the ptu but as we can see now both masters are off hence the ptu is running based on set one now if i put uh, one master on creating a split there goes set one so the ptu goes off but i put the parking brake off so now set two runs the ptu i'll put the parking brake back on both uh, sets are out the window ptu goes off and keeping the parking brake on i am now going to remove the master split so both masters are off so set one comes back into the picture and runs the ptu so there you have it a quick uh, practical demonstration of automatic uh, ptu operation on ground so while uh, we have the logic appear on the screen just one last uh, point i'd like to cover is ptu operation during engine start now during an automatic engine start you would put the mode selector to ignition start and uh, one of the masters uh, straight on and uh, remember the ptu is inhibited during the first engine start so irrespective of uh, the uh, set one or set two or whatever the ptu would not run during the first engine start but what about during a manual engine start now picture this we're doing a manual engine start we're starting engine number two first we put the mode selector to ignition start and then we put uh, man start push button 2 on so the apu bleed air is going to turn the starter motor which uh, is going to uh, turn the n2 rotor which uh, in turn through the accessory gearbox is going to run the uh, yellow engine driven pump effectively pressurizing the yellow hydraulic system now the green hydraulic system is of course not pressurized so there would be a differential pressure of more than 500 psi eventually causing the ptu to run but i just said that the ptu is inhibited during the first engine start well in this case up until this point of time the ptu does not know that you are going to convert this crank into an engine start because the masters are off so all it knows is that there is a differential pressure of more than 500 psi between the green and yellow hydraulic system so basically the PT only recognizes that you are starting an engine when you put the master on. So the next time you're doing a manual engine start while starting the first engine, just have a quick uh, sneak peek at the hydraulic uh, system page and you will in fact see that the PTU is running 
up until the point where you after your uh, cranking put the master on to introduce your ignition fuel in the man start procedure in which case the ptu senses it at this point of time as you starting your first engine and that's when the ptu inhibition during first engine start actually kicks in just food for thought okay turns out i lied that was in fact not the last point but before we do get into the last uh, point this is what the ptu looks like and where it is located okay now on to the actual last point so earlier i mentioned that while there is no actual transfer of hydraulic fluid from one side to the other hydraulic fluid from the operating side is in fact used in running the ptu which in turn pressurizes the other side it's just that this fluid does not actually move on to the other side past the ptu for example if we have a green engine pump low pressure now the ptu sensing this difference in pressure would kick into action to pressurize the green hydraulic system but the ptu now would only provide the pressure to run the green hydraulic system which would still function with the green hydraulic fluid itself but in this scenario the yellow hydraulic fluid will be used to run the ptu it's just that as we mentioned this fluid will not actually move past the ptu on to the other side now to understand why this point is of importance let's go back in time a little bit so some years back there were a few in service events where crew experienced for example a leak in the green hydraulic reservoir now this decrease in pressure due to the leakage triggered the green hydraulic pump low pressure ecam which would automatically activate the ptu which would attempt to pressurize the green hydraulic system but to no avail as the green hydraulic system is leaking fluid itself so the ptu in trying to pressurize the green hydraulic system would start to operate at a higher speed basically working harder and harder in its futile attempt to pressurize the green hydraulic system which in turn would cause the yellow hydraulic fluid which is helping in running the ptu to overheat and subsequently result in a yellow reservoir overheat ecam which would ask you to put the yellow pump off now resulting in a dual hydraulic loss so there was an oeb oeb 47 which was introduced during that period which uh, said that if we got a uh, one side hydraulic pump low pressure and subsequently the other side hydraulic reservoir overheat the oeb asked us to turn off the ptu and not put off the pumps on the overheat side the oeb was subsequently removed after a modification to the ptus the modification basically had uh, programmed in to the ptus that uh, if there was a uh, one side hydraulic pump low pressure and the ptu could not pressurize that side within 6 seconds the ptu automatically turns off so basically the logic behind uh, this is that if uh, again say we have for example a green hydraulic pump low pressure and the ptu cannot pressurize the green hydraulic system within 6 seconds it's probably because there is a green hydraulic leak like the scenario we dis we just discussed uh, before and the ptu would now automatically turn off saving itself from a high speed situation and also the operating hydraulic side from overheating 